Hello. I spent the day creating a prototype. This is a universal joy, a universal dream that every child has to create a linear accelerator in their basement. And now you can. So this is a linear accelerator creator. Uh, it's not yet anywhere near complete. It's barely, it's not a game yet. It's just a tech demo. But I figured I'd show it to you. The point of any accelerator is to get your energy levels up there, and that's what the MEV is. One MEV is uh, abysmal. It's lower than, I think, what you'd actually start with, but that's okay, because one is an easy number to grasp. So if we go over here, oh, what's this giant sticker on the ground? Klystron 1, the simplest grade of Klystron, but it'll still pump your KEV, and that's all that matters. Well, it needs power. Oh, look, it's increased our MEV 41 times. That's nice. Our MEV is 41 rather than 1. Oh, too hot. Oh, I guess water? So 274 degrees Kelvin is very, very close to freezing, and you can see that it dropped our Kelvin. It's cooling us right down. Oh, 314 degrees Kelvin. It, uh, it went way up, 274 to 314. That's really hot, like this bath water, hot bath water. Let's put another klystron, more klystrons, please. Plug it in, please. Oh, 73 MeV. And our temperature is still skyrocketing, so let's grab that water input. All right, that seems to work. 354 degrees Kelvin. That's, um pretty dangerously hot. That's okay, though. What could happen? Oh, no inputs available. Oh, look, there's no power cords. We ran out of power cords. Wait, there's some stuff that hasn't been plugged in yet. Let's plug in the water, too. Water, water. So you can see that the water runs along the wall, and the power runs along the, t the roof. Of course, that's not entirely true, as we'll find out soon. So let's plug this in, and you can see that we are at 98 MeV, and we have some very hot water, just, just good enough to get us to cool down 394 degrees Kelvin. That's um, too hot for water. We've only got one power strip left, one power node. Let's go ahead and make a, one more klystron. 118 MeV. Uh, we'll use this boiling water to cool us down. Not quite. We didn't quite make it. So, the boiling water is a little bit too hot. You notice what happens here is the water comes out of the previous klystron, goes over the wall, and then immediately comes back into the next one. Well, this is a stack-based system, so watch what happens when I detach this. Watch that 394 degrees Kelvin. 274 degrees Kelvin. That's right, it just substitutes in the next in the stack. So that's a nice way to control things. Keeps us nice and cool. And output, please. Well, let's put in another, another klystron and... Um, um, oh, we're, we're out of... we're legit out of inputs at this point. There's no more power coming from back there. Well, we can change this to an electrical box. How's that? That'll give us some more power. Seems like it's good enough. Well, let's see what else have we got. I mean, I, I did the klystron already. What else have we got? We got the electrical box and, oh, a sensor rig. Cool. Sensors to help your computers. Well, what can we do with the sensor rig, huh? Uh, we could plug it in. We need to do that. Um, that's interesting. It's got to power out as well. I guess it doesn't actually drain enough power to worry about that. Well, what, what the, what, let's go ahead and put up a, some bunching data. Oh, look, and uh, how about some heat readings? Well, you'll notice that this is a stack. So now the bunching data uh, is on the inside, and then the heat readings went out from that, and then a whole bunch of power cords. Well, what happens if we want to create a klystron here? This is a bunching data cord. So we can't. We, we have to have a power cord there. Well, look, now it's a power cord. 
This Glystron, however, is uh, not able to keep up with the speed of the particles we're seeing. If we look, the particles are at 118 MeV, which is just too high for this primitive Glystron. So we'll change it over to ooh, this beast. It's not plugged in yet. We're going to need to plug it in. Punk. Ooh, look at it heat up. Oh, that seems that seems pleasant enough. We've got a nice, solid klystron running here. Uh, let's go ahead and put in another one. More klystrons. Power. Wait, that's not power. Oh no. So you can see where the difficulty starts to come in. We've got this issue where um, we are not able to uh, to rearrange the cables while they're in the sky. So you've got to be careful with how you do it. There's actually a couple more pieces to this game that I haven't built yet, um, but uh, for now I wanted to show that off. The water is the same way. We stopped bringing in that hot water and we got the nice cool water instead. Uh, let's bring in some some water here. There we go. Nice, nice. One more piece of klystron, perhaps? Well, I mean, we can keep klystroning until we get sick of it, right? 934 MeV. Water's getting pretty hot again. 1047 MeV. We're doing really well now. Oh, we're out of power. Well, you know what that means. Wait, wait, I got a better idea. Oh no, we need to half power to do this. Okay, fine. Change this out for a sensor box. There we go. Now we'll make this into a, an electrical box. Now look, we've got our data all on the left there where it can't hurt us, and we've got lots of power on the right. So that means that we won't have any problem making this klystron work. And the next one as well. Particle stream too fast? Oh my gosh, we've actually gone past the maximum speed that we can manage here. So uh, let's just turn that back into basic, just so that it doesn't interfere with anything. We're at 1,047 uh, MeV, or one, uh, uh, that's not too bad, really. But it's not very good, either. That's about the limit of the prototype, I'm afraid. That's, um, that's as much as we get. But I thought I would show you the basic idea here, and the kind of cool way that the pipes all run, and they have this thing where they, uh, um, they stack up like towers of Hanoi, and you've got to worry about which ones on, uh, which ones on top, which ones next. And the water is the same way. And of course, in the end, it ends up looking uh, hypnotic because you're in this giant hall and you're just wandering through, seeing all the things you've built. Well, that's it. Haven't gotten any further than that, but um, it actually took quite a while. Uh, there's a lot more technical complexity under the hood here than you might think. How much more technical complexity? Well, let me go ahead and show you. So over here, we've got uh, this sensor box, and you can see how it's connected up to all, not the sensor, sorry, this electrical box, and it's hooked up to all of these power cables. And then over here, this is connected up through this sensor rig. Well, what happens if we take one of these electrical cables away? Well, all of these are still working, but, oh, no power. Needs power. Of course, when I reconnect it, it won't automatically reconnect there because it's already figured it out. But you may have noticed that when it ran out of power, it even detached the power output. So, all told, it was an interesting little thing going on here. 
and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's going to be a lot more stuff to it when I finish with it, but the idea is pretty straightforward. Get it? It's a linear accelerator. The idea is straightforward. It's, it's pretty late.